Welcome back again. Um, we're going to do a bit of a chill one today, which will probably end up being kind of a couple days put together as one video. Um, we'll start by doing a quick review of what I did yesterday on the weekend. I didn't get the camera out because it was a Sunday and I was kind of honestly just feeling playing around with some tools and mucking around and finishing some stuff off. So jump into that quickly. Um, follow me. I will migrate with you, Luke. <laughs> Um, we sorted out the heater core piece, so in there has the new piece now. This is probably flat. Yep. Um, it. It's all focusing. Yeah, so new O-rings and a new heater core control valve, and I also pulled the heater core out and flushed it out. It wasn't blocked, but had some rusty crud in there, as you'd expect. Put the brake booster bracket back in, reconnected everything back up, and also set the height of the pedal to match the clutch pedal. You can see that's way nicer now. Um, jumping into the engine bay, I found that the vacuum hose that goes to the fuel pressure rig on the rail had popped off. So that was our vacuum leak, connected that again. Got the missing hose clamp for the MAF, so that's back on. Ran it up for a while and got the coolant sitting at the right level. We just topped that up then. What else did I do? Kind of just a lot of fiddling around. Nothing really of much importance. Yeah. But um, I think today we're going to throw all the dash pieces back in, which we had to take out for the heater core. And then also throw the seats in it and bolt those down, because it'll be way nice to be able to move the car around and not sit on the floor. Um, and then we'll probably just roll it off these blocks and use the toe plates to give it a quick alignment, which will be, make it way easier to push if we need to and drive. But before we do that, we'll show you how to center the steering rack. So when you're aligning it, you've got the same um, steering ratio or steering lock side to side. Um, oh yeah, and on a side note, we also did a bit of playing around with the head unit and it does have Bluetooth. So that was a positive one. So I actually ordered two more of those head units, which we're going to put in two cars, which we haven't shown yet. But and they're just a, to. it's just a period correct head unit that we got from Turner Motorsport, so it's surprisingly very, very nice. And we keep getting very surprised by it, and it doesn't look super out of place, so yeah, it is good. Cool. Um, so yeah, let's jump into putting it back together. Nice. Okay, so there was a bit of a struggle there with me putting in the glove box situation, but that's all done now, which is nice, and I'm glad I never have to do that again, because it just, it's such a jigsaw puzzle breaking me. But uh, 
We're all done now. All of this is in. Found a handbrake boot. We didn't think we had one, but we did. So we gave it a little clean up and put it in. Luke's done a really nice job of just like wiping down everything and putting all of the under trays on this side and kind of assisting me with my struggle. But now we're ready to put the seats in and call the interior good, really, eh, Lukey? Yep. We'll get that done. Give it a quick vacuum. Yeah. Okay, so we're about to do a wheel alignment, but the issue we just had was for the gauges we tapped into the switch power for the lights to get it work and unfortunately it was running a little bit too much power so we've just gone up a voltage range because we tripped a fuse um yeah yeah we've just gone up there you go luke just corrected me we've just gone up an amperage um <laughs> and the fuses just because there's more load on the system so I just took the whole uh, center console apart and then uh, checked the fuses only to find that the fuse had tripped. So that's all back together now and it's all working great. So we're just getting ready to do a, what do you call it Luke? It's just a wheel alignment, but it's not like a proper wheel alignment. It's just a, we're just using toe plates to align the front wheels just to make them a bit closer because we're way off at the moment. Yeah, there you go. So we'll just quickly do that and then uh, I think that'll be us. Two days later. All right, we're back here in the Skunk Works garage working on the E30. Um, as you can already see by the intro, Luke and I got a little bit carried away the last time you saw us off camera, and we just pulled the glass out of the rear. And we also pulled the windscreen out too. So, uh, oh, and we pulled the door rubbers off too so uh we got a little bit carried away there but um today we're going to be fitting the airbox we finally got it back it's all bent into shape and we'll test that out and kind of finalize that which will be great and we've got some of this window trim here as well so we can just protect the body of the uh engine bay we'll better seal the airbox as well yeah and it will better seal the airbox as well and um what was the other thing we were going to look at lukey We've got the coating chip for the cluster, a six cylinder one, so we ah, yep. put that in so it'll actually show what the RPM is correctly. These bad boys. Yeah, just need to grab one. Um, one of them. Two to choose from. Yep. Oh, it's M20, three, two, five ones. I think that was a... Mount the airbox. Coating chip. Um, that's all I can think of. Yeah. Well, I guess. Kind of just see where the video goes. Yeah, exactly. And um, obviously the actual mounts for the airbox haven't been bent yet, so a part of that's just gonna be figuring out which of these holes we wanna go through and um, kinda use the factory holes are there. We don't wanna do any drilling and it shouldn't need to be mounted too bad, so we'll be strong. Let's get into it. Okay, so as you can probably see from Luke's arms and my great filming, just put the rubber strip on just the edge that's gonna be going over the wheel well here and um, we've just lined it up with these edges as well as best we can just so it sits as flush as we could possibly make it now this part of the actual box we've cut and bent so it sits flush with the bottom of the rail well, yeah with the bottom of the rail here and it's also going to sit flush with here that way we can mount our brackets that Luke is currently bending and figuring out just at a 90 degree angle from here and here and we'll just use one of these mounting holes and Probably that one and that one, but we'll figure it out. Um, so we're just gonna chuck it in now. Damn boy. Not bad, not bad, not bad at all. The first one, one might a little bit more there. Mm. This is like clip. This is like a two-stage clip, though, so you can actually like push it out one more if you want, like to like that. Yeah, there. Yeah. But I mean, it's hard because there's that button there. Yeah, that's pretty good though. Okay, cool. Now we're just gonna figure out mounting holes. So, cue lots of fucking around video. Yeah. So we'll just do a little close-up on what Harry's fitted. You can see that seal kind of just runs along there and then once that pushes down that seals there as well but um we'll put some seal along the top edge as well just to seal it on the bonnet 
but that's not really something we need to worry about at the moment. But yeah, we'll work out the mounting positions and come back. Cool, so we've just gone ahead and we mounted it in there. We've made the little brackets. They're all slightly different for each spot because they obviously have different measurements of where they need to go. We've quickly thrown a nut set in there and in there, and we're gonna need to do one on the upper rail in there as well. But we've just drilled the six mil holes where they need to be in the shield back there and then another one there. So what we're gonna do now is bolt the little brackets onto the two bottom ones to get it sitting where it needs to sit. And then that'll allow us to line up the top one and then we can put a nut cert in the upper frame rail where we need it to be. So we'll do that and then come back to you. Nice. Okay, so um, we just finished mounting the actual box here. Got that one all sorted as well. And that one just there which is great so it's gone actually really well we added a little bit of that window sealer just to here just because it was rattling kind of on the edge of that so it's worked out quite nicely that we had a bit spare um, we also found this intake and some aluminium tubing that we just found and just cut the size just so we can see how it mounts it that's not actually how it's going to be finished but we did kind of want it to angle down like that and it gives us kind of like a good representation of mounting or like what we want to go with we do kind of want it to angle down like that just to keep it out of the way which is good yeah so we'll grab another pod filter tomorrow probably and then i'll get some little black silicon hose joiner and then that'll connect to there and a little joiner there and we'll clean this up and make it nicer yeah um and then that'll give the little turn down with still heaps of room for the headlight and everything yeah so we'll get that in and then that's kind of the airbox done eh? yeah it's done and mounted and it, it's real sturdy and it doesn't rattle which is kind of the important thing i mean you don't want that thing just shaking up against the body it just gets annoying which is uh which is nice we did have a piece that could we were thinking about putting on the top it could sit under there and kind of there's like a border to it but we'll need to decide whether we want to do that or run like a, a trim around the top i actually don't mind how that looks Nah, neither. It kind of keeps it enclosed a little bit, really, yeah. Yeah, I could run that instead of putting sealant, because I don't know how well it would end up sealing to the bonnet. Anyway, it might be nicer just to have that welded along there. Yeah. Yeah. Or, I guess, you know, running some more of this over the top. But it's kind of nice having it enclosed. It kind of separates it from the rest of the engine, which yeah. is good. It all just looks quite neat, eh? Yeah. Anyway, we've got some dis more decisions to make, but we're happy with how the actual body of it's mounted and Luke and I are just tossing up whether or not we paint it black, so um, we'll reach out to our vast majority of uh, subscribers to decide whether or not we paint it back or leave it silver. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so now we're just going to get into uh, it's like doing the chip. Yeah, we can um, probably go over it real quickly. Yep. Because that's actually a really quick job and then we don't have to come back to it. Hand off. Um, so with the cluster coating chip, the chip just sits underneath the bottom of the cluster in there. You can see it right there. So I've just got to pull the little black surround off, pull that chip out, put in a 325 one in, and then it'll have the right um, RPM. So I'll probably do that off camera and we'll bring the camera back out when we start filming next time, considering this will be a bit of a rolling rolling one for the week eh? yeah yeah we'll probably come back and forth with it yeah we've got the long weekend as well so we might do a video after this one introducing a new car or something yeah totally yep. sweet all right uh.